Hi hey guys. So, uh, the last recording ended up cutting off there because I made a huge mistake. Um, in the second half of the video, I was kind of tired. I had just gotten up the phone after a 30 minute conversation and it was running a little bit longer than I expected it to. Uh, so I was starting to do something, some silly things like forgetting to attack the tap roots. And for the most part, it didn't matter because it was against Lando and Lando would just heal uh, without being attacked on the, in the next few turns. Unfortunately, in this case, this taproot ended up getting shot at once. I got shot at twice. I only got one damage on the roof. And for whatever reason, I did not register that that meant that it didn't summon. I was expecting it to summon, which would have kept Baza safe. But because I didn't summon, um, Baza was in fact the target. So in my original video, I just ended the turn after they got shot without it doing anything, which clearly affects the outcome of the, of the scenario with Baza having uh, a research on it. Now, I do have a solution that would have worked, but by just saying, trust me, I could have done it, I'm going to actually do it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, this is continuing on from the last video. The last thing that happened was Spire Spire on the grid to this one. Um, okay, let's go. Uh, and then attacks. <clears throat> Uh, Taproot will attack Baza, defeating it. And that ends the Grove Tender's turn. It moves it on to the Brawnen turn. Uh, no attack is what the Forsaken gets. This is still its mark. Uh, it can either move this direction or this direction. Is my choice. So I am going to choose to move over here, like this. Um, hmm, no, I'm actually gonna move over here. And the reason is because I don't want to get shot at by the shrubbery. Maybe I do want to get shot at by the shrubbery. The seconds are scary. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, because getting shot at the shrubbery shouldn't be a problem unless you get double crit. And the tree that gets summoned, if this does summon a tree, which is very likely to with two one shot attacks, uh, will get retaliated on by the Forsaken. And then the Forsaken can also do some pretty decent damage to the shrubbery spire as well. Um, so I rolled a no move at the start of my turn as well, before I forget. I also get one shot. I also get two. Spend six source to deploy a siege tower using my second build option. And uh, I'll also get two raises, which will both be on the shrubbery spire, doing one point of damage. And that ends, and that is the start of my turn. So move here. Move here, and Londo will move three, activating Diwin for the first time in this game. Um, spire, Spire, there are no Spires that have the range to attack the Forsaken. Um, this was an attack upgrade, but I forgot to put on it. Um, and the Battleborn will attack Ostomer. Uh, Londo will attack Diwin, get retaliated on, and heal back 1 HP. This is the correct way to do leech, by the way. Um, if you are doing it the other way, where you do it immediately afterwards, I do not blame you. That is what I thought for a very long time. Uh, the key here is that leech doesn't have the word immediately in its, in its text. So that actually happens after retaliation, which is super important for figuring out. Basically, Londo has to survive the retaliation in order to heal. 
but it also means he's stronger defensively when he gets attacked. So it's a it's a give and a take. He consistently has more HP, but he doesn't get it right away. Um, so that is the text for Bronin, and that ends the turn. Moves it on to the Grove Tender's turn, where this tap root will move up one. Uh, the Diwin will try and move, but it can't. And Lostamir will move two. And B Lostamir. Uh, spire, Spire, one out of ten because summon exists. So one shot. And it summons. We have freed. So we will put those. And then two shots, and can do them at the same time. It's from two different spires. But uh, there's, you never got a double crit. Well, that counts as a double crit. Um, it wouldn't overflow in any way. Attacks. Uh, the treed will prioritize spires over minions. So it will attack this spire here. And then Lostomir will attack and be Lostomir. Um, uh, Daiwin will also attack against Londo, retaliate, and Londo, because it's heal at least, will heal for two. Moves on to the Brian turn, where the Forsaken can, has no restriction. And the Forsaken's mark is still here, so it will not do anything fancy. Uh, the Battleborn will move up two, like this. Um, I also get a spire shot at the start of my turn from Raze. Removing an attack upgrade here. Uh, attacks. Lostomir will finish off Daiwen. And since Daiwen is on her basic side, I do get two source for defeating her. Um, and the Forsaken will attack the tree for four, one, two, three, four, getting retaliated on for two. Um, interestingly, uh, the, the tree had actually attacked the Forsaken. Ram would have been useful with its uh, with its tough ability. That's what they're going to be recalling it. Because it would only retaliate for, I believe it was a maximum of two or three. I don't remember. It literally never happens. Um, yeah, that is the Bron in turn. Uh, I believe I attacked one, two, three, four, five. I believe I attacked with the, the Battleborn. If I didn't, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening to me. Um, next is the Bron, uh, the Griptender's turn. They move. Uh, Fire is fire. Okay. I'm going to have these two spires shoot into Lost Me for three damage, and this one spire shoot into. Uh, Oh, actually, that's it. I only had those two spires. Uh, I'm doing that because I don't want the, the wave to end quite yet, and I don't mind my spires taking some damage in the meantime. Uh, I need time if, uh, for... Uh, the wave wouldn't end, but if Ostomir and the tree die, then Bondo goes into campfire mode, and he doesn't have time to get back to base. Uh, so... My spire is fired, attacks. Now I can choose either attack the C spire or this one. Uh, and it's going to choose to attack the weaker one. Um, it doesn't have to attack the one with the attack upgrade. The target priority doesn't force that. Uh, and Lost Mirror will 
flail around like a toddler with a beard. Um, moves it on to the brown intent where the forsaken cannot do something. Not that something is nothing. It can do whatever it wants. Um, Lassimer will take this. Or Lundle will take this. And he'll book it. Um, it's unfortunate. I'm going to defeat them way too fast. I probably should have. Yeah. I'm going to actually cheat a little bit and have it attack this attack upgrade instead. Because I really don't want the wave to end right now. Um and that's exactly what's gonna happen if uh if I continue on this current trajectory. So the attack upgrade's gone here. Um which is good because I forgot to siege anyway. Um and that ends the turn there, or that ends, oh, I'm sorry, that attacks. For they can attack the tree, defeating it, getting two source. And Battleborn attacks here. Uh, no retaliation there. And that ends the Brawn in turn. And he's on to the Grovetender's turn, where they don't move and they just get shot at. Uh, the taproot is going to get shot at and take one damage, feeding it. Taking it seven. Uh, last mirror just sits there. And end the turn. Moves it onto the brawn in turn. Um, Okay, um, first and foremost, do it up here. No attack on the Forsaken, which is, of course. Um, Londo will move three. I need to have the Battleborn not attack Lando. Um, the only way to do that is, so I've already gotten rid of the Traxar Hellion. So this could be a Traxar Loner, or a Traxar Ripnet, I mean. Um, I haven't seen the Wounded Priest yet, so it could be that. It could also be a Gate Port, and if it's a Gate Port, I'm very sad. Um, I see another on this too. Uh, anything but a gate port will help me out here. So let's look at it. And it is a wounded priest. Thank goodness. Okay. So I mentioned that the wounded priest got a change. So the way he works now is you can't just automatically recruit him. You have to attack and survive the retaliation from him if you want to recruit him. Um, I will simply attack and take two damage and retaliation, defeating my Battleborn, which in turn, oh. That is actually just as bad because the tech root's gone. Because I would end the wave If I end the wave, I really don't have the time. Uh, I'm going to get the source, right? You're going to gain 11. No, I'm going to max out on source regardless. There's no reason to kill Wellstar. Um, yet. So I'll go attack. Yeah, I'll 
Vamos a ver qué es. Get defeated and end the wave. It's really unfortunate because that means that Rondo, Rondo can't hold two pieces of equipment and this water terrain is going to be a nightmare to deal with. Um, but yeah, the wave ends and we move on to wave four. Uh, I get 11 source plus three from my drilling out pairs, but can get 14 source to get a maximum of 20. Um, uh, mark it. Uh, the good thing is do not build anything in this market, I believe. It's very poor, so they do not. Um, wings are not going to be useful because in this scenario, in this next wave, um, the good tappers summon vine heralds, which all have range, and wings don't allow me to block. Wings also don't give terrain advantage, which is super unfortunate. Um, well, I guess I should roll the event too. That'd be, that'd be a good idea. Uh, remove a spire upgrade from two spires. Does it say with at least one? No, it doesn't. So I can, I can remove this shrubbery. That is convenient. Um, So wings don't give water terrain. So if I deploy Dragon, for example, I can't have her walk here and grab this this research that's underneath this mistaken. I can, however, hmm. So with time vials, if I deploy Drang, I can have Drang move here, then time vials here. Assuming that the Forsaken doesn't move on the first tower. Because the, the Forsaken's mark is now the Grove Taken's Fortress. So how do I do this? Is if I can get if I can get Drain here at the very minimum or here, I can have her displace into the water to grab it. Um, but that would require the Forsaken actually not, not moving, which is only a one third chance. It's still a better chance than what, and at the very minimum, uh, Drang also has the option to promote, um, and do I find the Spire, which will also allow it to grab the research. So that's an option, um, to consider. I think time battles is my best option. I do still get two purchases, so I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set time battles. One, two, three. And then the next option is anarchist. So I don't need a second equipment. I don't think uh, the main harvest is gonna be any good. And I don't think that, as I mentioned, I don't think the wings are gonna be any good. The anarchist is not bad. Um, I can use it to drive a Swiss siege in this wave or the next wave. Um, if I want to win in this scenario, I have to, this is wave four, I can win simply by putting a Swiss siege here and then defeating the fortress. And that is, that is still a victory, but I do need to get this third research out first, which is what's going to be a little bit of an issue is timing for that. Um, so I might have to wait until wave five in order to defeat this uh, brown and fortress, or the Grove Tinder fortress. Uh, so, um, so I don't use any of my build options on, so I don't waste any of my build options on this brown six. and get a lance launcher here. Um, there's no reason for me to get a siege tower. They don't do anything more. And 
the extra range doesn't help and need the attack upgrade to cheaper. So it would cost me nine instead of ten. Hmm. It's actually not that big a deal. Nine instead of nine versus ten. For an extra range. Siege Tower is just strictly better, isn't it? Yeah, Siege Tower is just strictly better. So, um, I'm gonna grab the Siege Tower. I'm gonna spend four, one, two, three, four, to grab an attack upgrade on it. So now I have two attacks, which is going to be useful for when units start marching down. I have six swords left. Um, instead, I could realistically spend the resource on the smelter level two to give me access to some of the source pages. Um, but I'm afraid of winning the scenario before I get the chance to have this. Because the only way this is convenient It'll take me, okay, so let's say I do deploy drain, which if I'm deploying a promoted source each, it would be the only thing I'm deploying outside of drain. Um, I do one, two, three, four, four turns. And five, six, seven, eight. Take eight turns, seven with the time vials. Drain is a little bit too slow to um, to rely on in this case. Um, so I'm actually going to save the time vials for the next wave. And I'm going to spend four source. Um, or is it three source? Three source for enforced demand. The market is currently empty. I guess this one's revealed. Um, the market is basically empty, and on the next phase, it's going to reshuffle. And that's going to give me the option to get Baza back if uh, if I need to. Um, all right, I can potentially get Baza back, which is nice. Um, I can also get Lossimer back if uh, I want Lossimer. Um, I can get something. I can I don't think there's any any real value left in other than Baza. Baza is the only one that's able to walk on water other than Lando. Lando himself, if I just get into the next wave, can just walk up and grab it. So it's not that big a deal. Um. In fact, I might just have Londo stay out for a little bit just to do some value. Uh, might be a good idea. Um, too bad I can't have Londo drop it without him dying. Anyway, um, what was I doing? I will buy the Source Siege. One, two, three. So it's easy to advance. And then I'll also buy market buyout, which gives me access to. No, okay. So I've used the resource on an attack upgrade on this back my spire. Doing the back my spire because this front my spire is not. Necessarily the safest bet. Um, I could just put a fortification on all three of these, and this wave that they're deploying won't be able to damage it. I wonder how that works. Do they just sit there forever? Hmm. I'll have to ask about that. So that's a that's an interesting conundrum. I never considered that. Uh, this particular wave. Let me just double check that I'm not. 
Yeah, but heralds only have one attack on their promoted side. So if all three of these have fortifications. Huh. I would assume that game ends in a, that wave if the game state can't continue. I'm getting off track. We get 11 CP. Let's go. 11 CP. Um, I have one of those refuges. I'm going to use an anarchist to drive it and bring with his 3 HP because it's 3 change and time battles. Uh, I'm doing this because I could potentially get lucky if if the Forsaken does not move. I 100% win the game. Or, yeah. I, I get this third research anyway um, in the game. In fact, I'm not sure that I can't. Uh, it's reasonable that I even survive with all these things coming out after me. Um, yeah, so let's move into. Oh, and I just did the first research. One, two, three, four, five. And the group tenders will deploy two three one two three two three four three seats and Interesting how different Forsaken makes the game because the last time I played the Forsaken ended up sitting here for like four turns before moving up this direction. And getting to the base, and now he's way over here. It's very, very different the second time around, and it's um, it's interesting that the physician does that. It's very unreliable by design, but it always does something. Um, yeah, let's move on to the first wave. Uh, first and foremost is this, which is a no move. Yes, that is super lucky. That is, that is like super lucky. Um, three here. Uh, Drain will activate time vials to move. Oh, Drain doesn't actually have to activate time vials. So he, she can just move before the Forsaken next wave. And we'll be good. Um, can I move here? Uh, Spires. And Rondo will move back into base, claiming the second right on for the second research. Uh, attacks one, two, three, four. Last more dies. That's right, that's how the source seems to work. Um, there goes there. Uh, that ends the turn, moving it into the tenders who will move two. And do nothing else. Uh, moves on to the brown in turn. Let's see what the forsaken can or can't do. Can't attack, which is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So we're going to go one, two, three. Uh, ooh, don't want to do that quite yet. I have to move this first. And now this is the, let's see, who's the one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. First, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the union. Uh, 
three like this. And then one, two, like this. And then this research is back here. Um, and now we'll trigger time vials. Grab the research. And Oh, and I'm going to trigger the time out so you have to guess exactly what's going to happen. Uh, the sources will attack the fortress, and the fortress will um, attack, uh, but they will not block with the domains. Uh, and that ends the turn. Oh, the time barrels, I'm sorry. The time barrels will move back this way. And then is the turn. Two, 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 and one. Spires fire, no spires in range. So I know of attacks. Um, this front tap loop. We'll attack for one, get retaliated on for two, and then summon a bank held. Then we're on in his turn. No movement on the Forsaken, which is unfortunate. Um, then I'll move back to base, claiming that third of the nine. Uh, so she can move up one. So she will attack the third tender fortress. One, two, three, four. Uh, as is the fortress for two, the Italian for one, two or three. Okay, I'll take it twice. Oh no, no, I had two because I'll take one. Um, that's their turn. They don't move. Fires, 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 range, and attacks happen. Uh, Back tap root will attack first, or the front attack first. The back tap root will attack first, because honestly it doesn't matter if it's a second. Hmm. The second will not summon these other two, and that's a... That is a good thing, even though the damage is wasted. So I will choose to have the attack with the Vang Herald. I also don't want capture to happen, so there's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HP. But this does. So source each went back to the barracks because it was defeated by a by a capture. Now it is my turn as the plan. I have two decks to roll this time. Uh, the Forsaken die, and also the Abend die for the Anarchist. Once again, the Forsaken cannot move. The Anarchist has no restrictions. Uh, Spires fire, they have no Spires, and attacks happen. Brown Herald gets defeated. Getting only losses. Moves it onto their turn, where they do not move once again. Uh, spires fire that spires and attacks. Um, doesn't matter the order, what matters is that this is defeated for two souls. Uh, 
Next is round 10, round again. My fate is determined by a dice roll. No attack on the on this time, and the anarchist does not die. Number two here. The anarchist will attack, defeating the tepper, giving two source, and using the six source. The Forsaken during the attack step will overload the gate port, which is legal. It is really sneaky. Um, that's how they open there. Which is a little rock. Uh, throw one. And it has no composer on the bottom, so it's good. Cool. I can turn one of these top boots against them, which is actually quite good because if I win this wave, that's the end of the game. Um, so let's go move, move, fire, fire, no fire, attack, the anarchist is gone. Um, and it's their turn, moves it on to Brian's turn. No move for the Forsaken. Ugh. This is quite annoying. I don't know how often it does any move in this particular case. Um, but it's the risk you get with uh, playing Forsaken. You don't get to control them. Um, now this will up and her result and die anyway, so it's not like it's a, a big deal. I just kind of wanted to end it by a uh, wave three instead of wave five, wave four instead of wave five. Um, it's their turn because you can't do anything. Two, two, fire star, uh, non range, attacks, one damage, retaliates for a million, gives two first. Brian's turn. No attack. Um, unfortunately, the unrefusable office is ungrouped. This is a group. So I cannot use the unrefusable office to deal with that. Move like this. Um, since I can't attack it, and I know that we've already gotten rid of the Thorax, the only other option here is like a Sabusia or what's the last one? Uh, Traxor Luna. And either one of them is very good against. Good to the units coming out on the next wave. Uh, because I may just give them three summons if it's a Sabisia, so I'm not going to reveal that. Um, and I can't attack it anyway, so I can't get the source off of it. So I'm going to end my turn there. Moves it on to the Good to this turn, and then move two. And that'll end their turn. Moves down to my turn. Uh, I could potentially just win. Yeah, so moves here. Smash it for four. One, two, three, four. And I guess we'll have around for one. And now it is their turn. So move one, two. Uh, attack this. Get it higher on for two. Um, I'm going to assume that they will recruit it. Uh, it, it's not explicit anywhere, but one of the general rules for a solo is that if it's a positive thing that they can do, they will do it. So AI has chosen to recruit the wounded priest. Um, and normally, before they change it, wouldn't have because they never explore. Um, I guess that actually might not happen because before the attack happens, it gets shot at three times. So two shots first. Let's get to that one and then one shot. Let's see if it misses. Does not. So that does happen. It just happens if, uh, 
Let's see anything else. We get two safe. Uh, now it's uh, my turn. And the Forsaken will have. Uh, the only one I don't want to see is another attack. It's another attack. Um, I don't lose any build up since this turn. I'm not going to use any build up since quite yet. Um, worst case scenario. Retreat attack here, the one of these attacks here, and then have another turn to do it. Um, so no attack happens, which means I end my turn. I lose on to their turn, and move two. Two. Uh, let me fix that because it's annoying as shoot. Um, Spire, Spire. Uh, hopefully I don't kill him, actually. Um, so, one shot into the tree, one shot into the tree, and two shots into the tree. Defeats it, gives me two six. That was pretty lucky. I, uh, I needed that for sure. Um, So uh, you need to priest attacks here. And that ends the way that ends the Grove King's turn. Uh, moves it onto the brown turn. Oh my goodness, that is really unfortunate. I'm so close to victory. I don't want to have to move on to, a, to another wave. Um Uh, I think the wind appears that is no matter what I do. Um, so I'm going to spend six days on the thing. Five days. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get two attack of three at this point after I do one build option. And I end my turn. Move around to the one we do, move on to the right end of town, where this is the stack of dice I roll against this two half million. And I don't want to survive. Uh, defeats it. And the new rules do, in fact, give the reward, I believe. Can't say they don't. Um, I believe they do, but I. I'm not hundred percent sure. I can't remember. I'm gonna say they don't. Um yeah. So that ends the wave because for sake of doing mini one play. I'm just on to wave oh, five. Because there are five waves in this scenario. And I've already done all three of the objectives. The only way I lose is uh if my purchase gate is defeated. Um, oh, I guess if any of the, the brown inspires are defeated as well, but none of them were defeated. Hmm. I very quickly had to go back and double check that none of the, uh, the spires were, were defeated at any point in this game, so we're still good. We're still good. Um, okay, moving on to the fourth wave. I had I don't remember how much I had. Oh, I had a one source because I had spent it all. So the thirteen plus three. This is a six one to seventeen total sources wave. Um. Now, this is the way we can just win. 
Uh, as long as we do not lose, as long as our fortress gauge does not fall and the, none of these spires fall, we win the game. So all I need to do is do two damage to their fortress, and that is the end of the game. And they will not defend with their units if uh, they do have anything defending their fortress. I don't think it matters though, because they're going first and they're going to be deploying promoted troops. Let's say a priest there. Um, so first and foremost is the event. What's the event actually? Uh, two. That doesn't a lot, I think. My goodness. Um, I don't like getting this event because it hurts my spires. Um, that should be good. Um, market refreshes, and since all of the market options are now gone, I have to shuffle them back in. Something you have never seen in a pre-update game. Let's be rolling the bag, if anybody was wondering. Um, so group to go first and they grab the a market hero if available, otherwise a market minion. So they get the elite duelist, which is insane. Um I get two mar uh, market purchases and I did buy and force demand class wave. I didn't play it, but I absolutely did. Um so I'm going to enforce demands to get rid of this junk. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have sold this junk given where I got in its place. Um, I'm going to choose not to buy any of this, uh, gorilla and Drang are basically the same hero, but Drang is kind of out on her. Um, so she's just better. Um, yeah. Move, uh, next we go into the market. Uh, the, the building, sorry, and I'm going to spend 12 source, go down to 2, or it's down to 5. I'm going to upgrade my honor bit to level 3. And that means that my uh, Battleborn, Dispatch, and Forsaken Minions are all promoted. It doesn't affect the ones that are in play, unfortunately. Does it? I don't think it does, which is weird because the tempers are making me reroll the dice. I assume I just use the first die result there. And if I choose to reroll it, then I, I can choose to use the second. I have to use the second option on the, on the primary one. I section. Um, I don't even know that I'm going to be promoting it. Uh, but I have a first second actually. Um, 11, uh, 13 CP. I don't get any minions there, so I have to deal with the CP cost there. Um, 13 CP means that I have enough for either a Forsaken or a Source Siege. I think I actually go with the Source with the saving the Force Source and not using the Forsaken at all. Um, Yeah, because I can, uh, the, these two are fine. Um, and instead, go for source. 
Uh, I will pack up here because these cannot die. They're not allowed to die. And for source, I will pack up right here. Really, dude, this is really scary. It's really scary right now. Um, I think I'm going to the ball for a pilot. I don't know, it works three CP or less. And since he's a, a market minion, he does not have a CP cost. Fun fact of the day. Um, these are promoted, which is useful. Um, so 13, I'll go 8. That's five. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to group the dispatch with the Battleborn. And I always have a Battleborn driving the attack. Um, I could not group them. It's probably better to not group them, actually. One, two, three. But I will have the dispatch in front to so, uh, hold them back. Because holding them back is almost always a better idea. Uh, drawing will move will be on the top of the stack. And one will be second most on the top. Don't fall. This would never happen in real life. You would never have this, this issue in real life. That is for sure. Okay, my well, rookie days of play. This is the one I do not have memorized. Two uh, Kamari trades. They good. Uh, three top boots because I've, I haven't seen that before. That's the third top boot. Where is it? I may have deleted it, so I'm just going to make another one. I'm behind this um Oh, those are like over there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm behind that to mark. So, one, two, three, four, five. Surviving this wave is actually the scariest thing. Because uh, there's no way this Forsaken does any damage. Huh. Slowing this down. So they go first. If I move forward two, I could I move here? Then they move, then the two moves, one, two, three, here. And the top root moves here. So I can actually just guarantee my win if I don't slow it down. Right? I guess I'll find it. Um, so yeah, let's start. Um, so can just go first. Uh, Drang gets a range upgrade, which is nice because she's deployed this wave. That's part of the event, is if she's deployed this wave. 
just because I was like ignoring restrictions. Um, go to move me first. Go ahead and do that. Uh, this moves here, and oh, this is actually three. So this moves here. This moves here. Uh, attacks because it's the first item with the two range attacks, and it ends the turn there. So I'm gonna move to rang three, uh, two, round of three as usual. Uh, so I see you move three and shoot into here because that's the range of the source. Each. Um, moves here, and moves here. Spire, spire, there's a spire, and one turn. So the tree to move three, like this, because the mark is down there, down here. Um, copy it in the two, copy it move two, copy it move two, because it moves one, and this is still in the focus. Uh, now is my turn. Uh, they don't, they're just just to make sure they don't attack, so they don't. Now it's my turn. I need two. Uh, I can take only one, two, three, so that's fine. Um, moves one, two. One, two, three. I will move three. I don't think that matters, so it's one, two, three, four. Puts the focus and defeats them with the source each. Um, I also get an iron piece of ball for here. So this tattoo is mine in case it mattered because I could use the tattoo to get this one. And then I bond it finish it off. There's a, there's a good chance that I would have won even if. But yeah, that is the game. Um, I'm sorry that I had to redo it in this way. Uh, and I'm sorry that this second, this third half, I guess, this last third was a lot less energetic than the first. It was currently uh, 2 a.m. for me as I, as I was trying to figure out a way to, to just put a note in saying, well, I could have actually done this. But with the Forsaken, it, because in the, in the original video, if I had just kept all the Forsaken rules the same, I would have uh, won the game by putting Londo out and uh, grabbing the the research that was on the that was down here. Um, because the Forsaken ended up being up here uh, in that video, and then ended up uh, settling their fortress. Uh, with relatively high HP. Um, and I ended up not being able to do that in this particular situation because Forsaken very much change how they want to play every single game. Which is super cool. Uh, Forsaken are very strong units. Um, I gave them a lot less credit than I should have for a long time. They're very defensive. Any, because, so it feels like the dice is obviously the uh, four six of ten. You just can't do something, and it feels like it's a negative, but realistically, it's not because not moving generally means that you're stopping in the middle of the road right in front of your fortress, and your opponents are just attacking it. And then the the not attack is the one that really hurts. The non attack is the one that, that gets me a lot. I don't think I made any mistakes in the second half. I could be wrong. I could very much be wrong. I'll find out when I look at the video later 
and I'll put them in the community comments just like everybody else does when they realize they made mistakes in the game. Hopefully nothing game breaking. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Anyway, thank you for watching. Good night.